Good morning, everybody. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I want to thank all of you. Thank you so very much for being here today. We are here to remember and to commemorate the sacrifices of so many, not just the soldiers, but the civilians during World War II in the Philippines. And I know so many people have come far and wide from the Philippines, across the United States, from England, from everywhere. So uh, I really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. Why are we here today? We are here to show the world that the brotherhood between the United States and the Philippines was forged in the trenches of Bataan and Corregidor almost 75 years ago. And nobody can break that brotherhood. We have waited almost 75 years uh, for this seminal point of World War II history to be included in the US history. So on July 14th of this year, history was made when World War II in the Philippines was included in the grade 11 US history curriculum framework, chapter 16. But this is just the first step, the first of many steps. It took so much effort from so many people here. I want to thank them for their support. We would not have reached this juncture if not for their support. Now, what's included in the curriculum framework? The creation of the Philippine Commonwealth, which was inaugurated on November 15, 1935. And of course, this was brought about by the Tidings McDuffie Act, which was passed here in the United States in 1934, which provided for the establishment of a Philippine Commonwealth government in preparation for its independence in 10 years. However, it also limited the immigration of Filipinos into the United States to 50 per year and reclassified the Filipinos living here, the Filipino nationals living here as aliens. As you all know, when President Franklin Roosevelt declared war and said that it was a sudden and deliberate attack, War was already going on in Asia, first in 1931, Manchuria, and then in 1937 in China. So in 1940, Japan already had military bases in Indochina. July 22nd, 1941, it occupied Indochina. Four days later, on July 26, 1941, the US Army forces in the Far East was created by the War Department, signed by President Roosevelt, and what it was was it federalized all organized units in the Philippines under the service of the United States Army Forces in the Far East. And its commanding officer was General Douglas MacArthur. That is included in the curriculum. It took us a while, actually, it was only in March of this year that the Instructional Quality Commission at the California, the Department of Education, the IQC or Instructional Quality Commission is the body that oversees the curriculum. So it's composed of a commission. It's a very democratic process whereby two drafts were issued to the public for review. And so it was only March this year that they accepted the fact that Filipinos were part of the US Army. Also in March, they included the word strategic to retreat. So that was a major breakthrough, but they had not accepted at that time our recommendations, the other recommendations. The Battle of Bataan will be an important part of this curriculum framework. And as you know, 
The troops fought in Bataan without any air support. In January, they were already on half rations. Mar February, there was no longer any quinine that was distributed to the soldiers. And by March, they were already on quarter rations. And they were heavily, the, the, the soldiers suffered from massive disease and starvation. But despite that, they held Bataan for 99 days, disrupting the timetable of the Imperial Japanese Army of 50 days. So despite massive disease, massive starvation, and fighting without any air support, they delayed the timetable of the Imperial Japanese Army. This is now in the curriculum framework. The Bataan Death March. The Bataan Death March is, until now, portrayed as the biggest single surrender in US military history. But that will no longer be, because in the framework, as I mentioned, the Filipino and American troops of the US Army forces in the Far East delayed the timetable. After suffering for 99 days in Bataan, the Yusafi troops were forced to surrender under Major General Edward King. Approximately 75,000 soldiers consisting of 63,000 Filipinos and 12,000 Americans were forced to surrender. They were forced to march some 60 miles away in triple digit temperature in April, the hottest month of the year. Those who could no longer go on were either beaten, bayoneted, shot, some were even beheaded. Approximately 300 officers and non-commissioned officers were executed in the infamous Pantengan River Massacre. Once reaching their prison camp at Camp Oldano, another 20,000 Filipinos and 1,600 sol American soldiers died. A month later, on May 6, 1942, General Jonathan Wainwright was forced to surrender the rest of the Philippines. <laughs> 